Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about romance books that have a disability representation in them. Baby, baby. I love romance books with disability rep in them. I have over three videos I'm pretty sure, they're all going to be linked down below if you want to check them out. Um, but these are some of my favorite books of all time. As someone with a disability and a chronic illness, I just I love these books so much. I'm wearing one of my designs I created actually for people with chronic illnesses and disabilities. So it's called Chronically Courageous. Um, you can order a shirt, a mug. There's different colors other than this one in the link in my bio um, at uh, bonfire.com. So you can go buy one of these there. I love it, it's so comfy. So um, yeah, I wanted to make something that really helps other people feel seen. That's also really cute. So yeah, anyway, <laughs> let's get started with these recommendations. I also apologize for the probably not appealing setting that we're in right now. Um, my, my, my tripod stand thing broke, like the thing that attaches your ring light to your tripod, it broke um, and I don't know how to fix it. So <laughs> we're working with what we've got, but no, whoa, this is my fifth video for disability representation. I probably, shouted loud and proud about these books because they're some of my favorites ever. So let's get started. A recent read of mine is Painted Scars by Neva Altaj. This whole series, okay, this whole series, I'll mention the other books in the series probably in a later video because I can't go on a, like a rant about this series right now because it is so stinking good. Um, but this is the one that started it all. This is book one, Painted Scars. I feel like she's definitely grown in her writing. This is her debut novel. And it has definitely grown with the series. Each book just keeps getting better and better and better. But the disability rep in here, I thought was so good. Okay, this is a mafia romance. And this is centered around Nina and Roman. Roman is a mob boss who was recently in a car accident. Someone tried to unalive him, but he is alive. But the end result is he has trouble walking now. I believe he suffered a back or leg injury that left him with the inability to walk on his own without using a wheelchair or a mobility aid. Um, and he is trying to find out who caused this accident because he knows it was not like accidental. He knows that someone caused this accident. And in the Russian mafia or any mafia in general, um, if the mafia boss is not considered like strong, you will be taken over. And so because of his situation now where he is using a wheelchair every single day, he has to basically show his people that he means business, that he means to run this place with an iron fist so he needs to get married you figured out more why when you read the book but the end result is he needs to get married end result he finds nina here whose father is in deep doo-doo with him so he's like blackmailing her to marry him and then obviously by them faking this marriage they fall for each other this one definitely is not my favorite in the series but i feel like it's a great like starter book you know, um, I also feel like this is great if you're not into mafia romance and you want to get into it. This is a great series and great starter book for you. Um, but definitely there are better books in the series in my opinion. But the disability rep in here was so great. I love the discussion of mobility aids as a mobility aid user myself. Like I just loved seeing that. You get to see a Roman experience of physical therapy in here because his end goal is to be able to only use a cane to walk. Like he is able to use crutches a lot in this book, but his main goal is to end up using a cane and that's how he wants to get around and so he's really pushing himself and really working hard in physical therapy. There is just way more to this book but I really 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 liked it and I want to hear from other mobility aid users on what you thought of it because I just thought it was so great. Next time a sweet one we have Sweet Talk by Cara Bastone. I really recommend that you listen to this on audio. Um, there are graphic audiobooks on um, Audible for this whole series so you kind of have like a whole production each person each character has their own narrator and there's background noise it it's fantastic i love these books this one is just so stinging cute it's very short too so that's a plus but it was it's so good for how short it is so elliot in here really suffers from insomnia and one night he really wants to chat with his sister um, but he ends up accidentally clicking the wrong contact in his phone. He has dyslexia and so he uses voice memos to talk. And he also did not read her name. Um, and he ends up dialing, calling up, voice memoing the wrong person on his phone. He has this person saved as 
JD in his phone, not knowing who JD is, he doesn't remember who this person is or how this contact ended up in his phone, but it's actually this girl named Jess. <laughs> and I'm not gonna spoil who like Jess is or JD is for you in case you wanna read the book, but um, the whole book he's trying to figure out who like JD actually is because they start actually talking to each other through voice memos and it is so stinking cute, I love it. Elliot's whole persona is so sweet and caring and he just wants to find out who this freaking woman is. But he's going through some things himself. He is dyslexic and he's going through some other disabilities and unnamed mental health issues. And so I just love the discussion of all of that revolving him in this book. Next is Not My Type by Evie Mitchell. Look how cute this cover is. I love to see a wheelchair user on the freaking cover. This is the romance between Jay and Frankie. So Frankie is the host creator of the All Access podcast, which is talking about accessibility specifically in more of a steamy way, if you get my drift. And so someone asks about uh, rope usage, rope play for people in wheelchairs or people with disabilities. And she's like, hmm, I don't know anything about that. So let me go do my research. And there she comes across Jay, who is very knowledgeable in the act of rope usage okay and so while she is learning stuff from him they end up uh becoming friends and then developing a romantic relationship and i just loved how sweet this was and the discussion of disabilities in here fan freaking tastic a plus even mitchell knows what she's doing she knows what she's writing about when it comes to disabilities she also has another book in this series i'll probably do in my next rec video that also has chronic illness rep in it but she has a bunch of books that have this kind of rep in it and i just I adore it, she does so well. And this book in general was really sweet and really cute. If you're wanting just a fun read, definitely pick this one up. Next is A Heart of Blood and Ashes by Mila Vane. This one is a fantasy romance and this is the romance between Yven and Matic. So Matic is this warrior dude who is trying to find the person who killed his parents. And he has been told through the grapevine that it is this king's daughter named Yven. So he's trying to find her to get revenge. Yven ends up finding him instead and is like, no, 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 no. I did not kill your parents. The reason why your parents are dead is because of my father. He is horrible and we need to do something to overthrow him. He's like, well, what are you talking about? No, I've been told you are the reason why my parents are dead. She's like, no, I'm not, but we can figure out a way to get back at my father because I'm telling you he did it. And so if we get married and overthrow him, you know, you'll get your revenge, you know? You you, you can unalive him too, I don't care. Um, and he's like, um, okay, I, I like your plan, but I still don't believe you. So we'll get married, we'll do the whole shebang, but I don't trust you and I don't believe you. And so the whole book is about them trying to navigate their married life together while Maddox is not very trustworthy of Yvette and she's trying to show him how much she cares for him and his people and she she's not the reason why his parents are dead. Yvette in here has actually been abused by her father. She does not give a crap about her father because he was horrible to her. He kept her basically in a tower with her mother her entire life. At one point, Yven got injured so bad that she now walks with a permanent limp and with scars all over her legs. And so she has a physical disability that inhibits her to walk for certain times and certain lengths. And I oh, I really related to Yven in that way because of my hypermobility joint syndrome. I'm not able to walk for long periods of time and with my pots, I can't stand for long periods of time either. But her and her monologue in here about the way that she feels about her body and the way that people treat her because of it, oh my word, so stinking good. This is amazing, a wonderful, enemies to lovers, marriage of convenience, fantasy romance. An alien one I have for you is When She Was Lonely by Ruby Dixon. This is also Own Voices. Um, so yeah, this is a novella in the Christopher series. I bet you could read this one out of order if you want to. Um, you do meet previous characters in this series, but they're kind of like companion books. But this is the romance between Ashley and Kex. Kex? I can't pronounce Ruby's like hero's name sometimes. They just get me. Um, anyway, they live on a planet called Rizzo 3. Ashley has been abducted from Earth and she is finally like a refugee on this planet and she has her own farm. But Ashley is really struggling to fit in on this planet and to make her farm prosper because nobody knows about her disability. Because in this world and in this like universe of aliens, if you're a slave and you are not perfect, you are unalived, you know? So ever since she got abducted um ashley has had to pretend that she can fully hear people 
but she's hard of hearing. Ashley can't hear out of one of her ears and she's partially deaf in the other one. And when she was on earth, she had, uh, I believe, uh, hearing aids, hearing aids that helped her hear. But when she was abducted, they just didn't bring them with her or something. And like, they just cast them off. And so for a year, she's had to pretend that she is perfect. So she's not killed. Um, and no one knows that she just can't hear out of one ear. And so she pretends to just like be mean and ignore people. So they don't know that she actually can't hear. But now since she's living on Rista 3 where it is safe for her, she doesn't necessarily 100% believe that she is safe. Um, and so she still keeps up with this charade. Kex finally realizes what is going on with Ashley and decides to befriend her and help her out and trying to be that sense of comfort and safety for her. And then it develops into a romance between the two. This was so stinking sweet. Uh, Ruby Dixon herself is also hard of hearing. And so you could tell that this just was something that Ruby loves to portray in her book um, because I just fully felt her heart and soul in this when it came to the disability representation. Next is Meet Me at the Anvil by uh, Kate Pryor. This is a standalone historical romance novella on Kindle Unlimited if you want to go check that out. This is the romance between Diane and Liam. So Diane is set to marry this guy she holds no passion for but it's like an arranged marriage situation like she's set up to marry this dude um, and there's nothing she can really do to get out of it or so she thinks. But on her wedding day literally as she's saying her vows she ends up fainting. Diane has a chronic fainting condition where she just swoons and faints at inopportune moments um, and she cannot control it. So I think she honestly had like POTS or something, which is my condition. And so I was like, dang girl, I relate to you so hard. I'd probably be the one to faint at my wedding too. Anyway, um, she ends up fainting right when she's supposed to say her vows in front of everybody. And then she wakes up afterward and realizes like she cannot marry this man. Like he is making fun of her for her fainting condition. And she's like, I don't, I don't want to live with that for the rest of my life. Like. I hate how this is happening to me and I don't need other people to make fun of me for it. And so she runs away and the best man named Liam ends up following her and joining her on her little runaway trip. She doesn't know, but he is harboring some deep feelings for her and is totally into her and tries to reveal those feelings. And then they may or may not go on a little road trip themselves to Greta Green to maybe get married. <laughs> I just thought this was so sweet and I really, really, really related to Diane when it came to fainting and her thoughts about it. The last two books that I have to recommend are a part of the same series. It's a part of the Bow Street Bachelor series by Kay Bateman or Casey Bateman. Book number two in the series is To Catch an Earl and this is the romance between Alex and Emmy. And Emmy is the daughter of a very renowned jewel thief and she kind of takes up the mantle for. But she's doing it for a good cause. Like she's stealing the jewels that were stolen by other people. You know what I mean? And so Alex is working with the police to figure out who this jewel thief is. So he doesn't know that he's hunting out Emmy. He knows who Emmy is in person. He doesn't know that Emmy and the jewel thief are the same person. And then they end up falling for each other in real life, but then they realize that they're chasing each other or getting trying to run away and then chasing them. I really loved Emmy in here. Um, she was really fighting for what her father believed in about like returning things back to their rightful owner. And then Alex was trying so hard not to fall for Emmy, but he just could not help himself. This one has disability representation with Alex. He is a war veteran with a vision impairment. And it's just a slight thing like that. I love a lot of these books, like they don't make the disability the forefront or the main plot of the book like it's just something that somebody has and somebody deals with and that shouldn't be end all be all in the main thing in someone's life like it's just a part of someone's life and so i loved that about these this book and then the next one as well the next one is the princess and the rogue a lot of people have talked about this one because this one is an anastasia retelling i love anastasia retelling so this one was fantastic to me this is the romance between anya and sebastian so anya she is fleeing russia um, and she ends up winding up in London and staying there for many years. Anya is also a companion to a duchess and works in a brothel um, to teach girls to read. Um, Sebastian just happens to walk in one day for whatever reason and ends up across Anya and mistakes her as one of the girls working. And he's like, I'll have you right now. Like, let's go. Like, yes, I'll pay whatever to like have a night with you. And she's like, sorry. I don't work here. <laughs> but then he ends up like stealing a kiss from her and she runs away and things go from there. He's trying to find this woman again because he's utterly intrigued by her. And then Anya's obviously more than what she appears to be. Um, and he is kind of in for a shock and a wild ride when he realizes who Anya actually is. The hero in here, Sebastian is also another war veteran and he is hard of hearing in one ear. And so Anya has to stand on one side of him to be able to like 
talk to him but also whisper like sweet nothings in his ear because he can't hear out of the other one but man this one was so good it's one of my favorite historical romances it is fantastic but anyways there you have it those are some romance books with a disability representation in them please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and be sure to check out those other videos that are linked down below and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me a, a crown emoji in the comment section down below but anyways thank you all so so much for watching i'm so sorry again for this messy situation my glasses glare the hair all of it <laughs> but i really wanted to make this video for y'all so anyways thank you all so so much for watching i'll see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all wake up today's gonna be a good day 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 wake up today's gonna be a good day